Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. This is Northwest Small Batch Brewing and today I want to do a quick video. It's a follow-up on my video short that I did last week on uh, an issue I had with my claw hammer brewing system. A lot of people are buying the claw hammer system nowadays. It's uh, probably the best price for a modular system you can find and the guys over at uh, claw hammer are super helpful uh, when you have issues with it. So uh, that, that being said, uh, I, if, if YouTube will let me do it, I will put a link to my YouTube short that I did uh, earlier in the week up here uh, regarding my issue, uh, which will help you understand this video because I decided to do a quick follow-up. Uh, before I get started, uh, don't let me forget, um, nothing happens on this channel without you, so please, if you want to help support uh, the channel and, and new videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe at the bottom of the page. It's free, no cost to you, and it really helps out uh, the channel. So that being said, I'll start with the biggest issue I have with the claw hammer system, which isn't an issue, it's just, I think it has to do with um, the part itself. I believe, and I'm just gonna say this, that they're getting this part from China. In other words, claw hammers, the claw hammer guys are not manufacturing this element. Um, so it's not really their fault, but uh, I'm not gonna reopen it again. If I can, I'll put a picture up uh, briefly here to show the inside. But basically, this whole piece here unscrews and inside here, there's three wires, right? There's two that are, I don't know if it's the hot and cold, I don't know what, they, what they're for, but there's two wires that are the main power. I guess they match the end of the cable, right? And then there's a ground. If this ever gets loose, sometimes it will get loose because it's only, you can really only hand tighten. There's not a really easy way to tighten it further. Um, but if it starts to get loose, you don't want to just tighten it because the all the cabling in here is screwed down. And if you start to tighten it over time, those cables are gonna to start to wind up on each other and they're gonna get wound up and wound up and then they're gonna snap off uh, their post, uh, which is what happened to me. So I had to take the whole thing apart. If it ever gets loose, you need to take this whole thing apart, unscrew the ground, uh, then tighten it up and um, put it back together. And then the last thing you do is put the ground back on. That way when you're tightening it, the cables are not gonna wind with it. Uh, so be very careful when you're removing it from your kettle. Try not to, to mess with this too much. Mine pulls out further than I like sometimes, but just try not to get it turned or twisted. Try to keep it pretty straight. Um, that being said, if you do have a problem with it, uh, okay, first of all, the controller that goes with this, that controls the heat and the pump and everything. Um, the first tip here is uh, if it turns on, right there's power on the light but the screen is blank or it turned on and it was fine and then all of a sudden the screen went blank first thing to check is the fuse they only send one spare fuse with the system uh, i'm really happy that they sent a spare fuse but like for me i put it in and it blew as soon as i put it in so i was out of spare fuses go online to amazon i'll put a link uh in the description to the fuses that you need. They're super cheap. Uh, I think it's like $7 right now or, or around that range. And you can get like 20 fuses. That should do you just fine. And you should get that before you need it. Because once you need it, then it's frustrating to not have it and not be able to continue your brew day. Uh, also, um, but, but, but it's not here, but part of the controller is a GFCI connector. You can buy those as well for like $14 or something like that. And sometimes those are faulty. So I bought one just to have a spare because they're not that expensive and I'd rather have one available if I need it. Um, yeah, so those two parts are good to have spares. You can order these um, silicone rings from direct from the climber folks. You can also get them on Amazon. Um, uh, I have a spare one because I know at some point it's gonna wear out. Uh, and I'll need it, or if it tears or something in the middle of brew day, it's just good to have a backup. Also, you can get these caps that go over the hole where this goes into your ke your kettle. So if you wanna use your kettle with like an open flame, you just put a cap on it and put the tri-clamp, and now you can just use it like a regular kettle. I have some of those. You can get those on Amazon as well for just slightly cheaper than if you're buying it directly from Clawhammer. Uh, sorry, I should probably not say that, but it's true. Um, this is, by the way, my um, 
whip beer that I made. Uh, you probably already saw, but if you haven't seen that video, I will put a link to my full brew day video for my whip beer up in the corner here as well. Okay. So other than that, you'll also notice that, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this doesn't look very clean. I have put this through every cleaning possibility I can think of, and it always comes out this way. It is not rust, by the way. I can take like a scraper and scrape it off, or even my nail. So it's just dried on wort that I just cannot get into the nooks and crannies of this thing. And it's just, you know, it is the way it is. It gets boiled anyway, so it should be, I mean, it's not like gonna be a problem, but you know, I wish there was a way to get it really nice and clean back to the way it was. By the way, if you want a replacement or a, like a, a hot swappable um, element just to have in case, um, the problem with it, with looking at the Climber website, you can buy the cable, you can buy the element, but this section right here, from here to here, does not look like it's sold with it uh, from the Climber guys directly. So I looked online to try to piece one together and I couldn't even find this, this piece. So finally I found it on Ally Express. Uh, they do charge an arm and a leg for shipping. It's almost as much shipping as the item itself and it ends up being like $60. But $60, I mean the element itself is $40 on the Clawhammer site. So $60 for the entire thing, including the cable from Ally Express. You just have to wait a long time for shipping. Might be worth buying one as a backup just in case so you have it. Otherwise, you're not waiting around trying to get one. All right, again, this is not Clawhammer's fault. Although I do wish they sold this part. I, in fact, I wish they just sold the entire unit from the element all the way down to the cable. Why can't they just sell that entire piece? If you, you know, cause chances are you might need one at some time. Uh, I don't know, but they don't. So maybe in the future, uh, they do add stuff from time to time. So you never know. All right, let's move on. Uh, sorry, I'm going so fast, but I got a lot of stuff I want to get through here. Um, the plug, um, so the sprayer that's on the top of your claw hammer that's recirculating the wort, sometimes it doesn't want to like kick in when you turn it on. So I, I saw this tip from Emmett, which is that um, what you want to do is unplug the hose from the sprayer on the top, on the lid, and then just recirculate it directly through the hose. That'll get the air out. Once all the air is out of the lines, turn off the pump, plug it back into the lid, and now it should be able to pump through that sprayer really easily. So purge the air in your, in your tubes, in your lines first. Um, there was something else I was gonna say about that. Yeah, I wish I could remember. All right, anyway, let's move on and I'll see if I can come back to that. Um, one thing is just a learn, learning uh, curve is that if you're not used to using a separate controller and a separate pump and all the hoses, it can be a little daunting at first and you're most likely going to forget to turn the valves closed uh, when you're brewing or not using the pump. The problem with that is if you un unwittingly open or pull a hose off, it could shoot wort, I'm speaking from experience, that's very hot all over you or all over your stove or all over the floor or wherever you're at, and it will just keep leaking out, right? So I can't tell you this amount, like the number one thing I can tell you that will help you is always make sure you're checking your, you know, valve closures on the, on the pot and the pump all the time before you touch anything. Don't touch that pump button unless you've made sure that the valves are the way you want them. Um, or it makes a mess. Um, oh, I'll see if I can show you a picture because I think I have mine hanging up from the current brew session I just finished. Uh, when you clean the hoses, the tubes, some of them are kind of long. I like to just hang mine over the shower head to dry. They're so long, that's the best place I could find. It doesn't take that long for them to dry and um, it's, a, it's a cool place to put them, you know. Um, what else? High gravity beers. Yeah, so high gravity beers. Uh, Emmett told me this little secret. It seems to work pretty well. The claw hammer system can, ha can handle up to 18 pounds of grain, 20 if you're really, really pushing it, but it's difficult to do 20. Uh, so if you're doing a high gravity beer that's taking quite a bit of grain, um, the best way to do it is fill up your pot, your kettle for the maximum amount of water that you need for that particular session, if it's eight gallons, nine gallons, whatever it is, right? Heat it up to your mash temperature 
and then draw off a couple gallons of it at least. And then put your basket in, put in all the grain. It's going to be thick at first before it starts, before the enzymes start to work and it starts to thin out. So put it, put all the grain in, and then as it starts to thin out, slowly add back water until you're at the point where you just can't add any more water. That's it. You know, you're not going to be able to do any more. Do your, do your mash like you normally do. When you go to drain uh, the mash, you know, drain the grain, uh, whatever water was still left over that you couldn't fit, just sparge that over the top of the grain. Shouldn't be a whole lot, maybe a gallon at the most. Um, uh, and it will affect your efficiency a little bit, but you know, it's the best way to be able to do a high gravity beer in the system that's not really meant to hold that much. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, the pump, sort of like uh, gravity, like doing a, 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 a siphon, I found, and maybe it's supposed to be this way, but it seems to work way, way better if you put the pump down way below the kettle. So if the kettle's up on a stove or up on a, a table, put the um, pump on the floor and it'll work way better. Plus, if you can find a piece of wood to drill the drill down the pump onto, it'll keep the drill upright and stop it from moving around. All right, that's it. I don't want to take any more of your time. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope some of those tips might help you if you're thinking about the system or if you already have the system but didn't know about some of these tips. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, I'm about six months in on this particular system and uh, I'm liking it a lot. Uh, it, but there's a you know, couple little tweaks and everything. All systems have a little learning curve uh, until you get it dialed in. So I will see you in a week for another video. Thanks for stopping by. And... Um, yeah, if you have any tips for this claw hammer system and you're using it, please put them in the comments because I would love to hear any tips and tricks you have for using the system. And until then, I'll see you on the next video. And as always, thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot for brewing. No, keep on brewing is what I want to say. See you soon.